In this video, we're going to talk about the three types of marriage interviews that you might experience. The first is the regular old interview where it's just the two of you going in, sitting down together and talking to a USCIS officer. The second is the Stokes interview. This is the interview that you might be asked to come back for after your initial interview doesn't go so great for whatever reason. And the third interview is the spontaneous Stokes. This happens during the regular interview, but you don't know that it's happening until it does, and it's when they split you into two different rooms with little warning. So we want to talk about how to prepare for each of those in turn. If that sounds good to you, I'll see you after the break. Go. Hey everybody, welcome to Emigrate. We're the channel that gives you reliable information to help you make better decisions and avoid costly mistakes in your immigration journey. As always, the disclaimer is, uh, if you have any sort of immigration problem you're not sure about, it's great to just go to an expert, but we're also realistic here. 80% of people who need a lawyer can't afford one in the United States, and many people who can afford one can't actually find one because there are access issues associated with that. So this channel is part of our threefold mission at Bull City Lawyer, which is an immigration law firm of education, advocacy, and vigorous representation. And by providing this sort of free education resource, we hope that we can make immigrants smarter. And when immigrants are smarter during their immigration process, the whole immigration system becomes better and healthier. So today we're gonna to be talking about the marriage interview and there are three kinds. Now, this is not something you're gonna find in a book, but this is just one way that I think about what can happen in an interview. And there are really kind of three distinct interviews that you can conceptualize. The first interview, the one that everybody really calls the marriage fraud interview inaccurately, is just a regular interview for something like a marriage-based visa. So this will happen when you're adjusting status within the United States, and then a one-person version of it can happen if you're adjusting at the consulate and the beneficiary is sitting there with a the consulate officer, okay? So in this interview, you go through the basics. When it's just the two of you in a room or just a basic interview, and you're gonna be asked to confirm everything on your application is correct, you're going to be asked to repeat some of the answers that you put on your application uh, and you might be able to uh, be and you might be asked to, to talk about your relationship if you're within the United States doing an adjustment of status interview together or otherwise. Um, and the way to prepare for this is pretty straightforward. You want to know what's in your application packet. You want to know how you came together. You want to be able to say that the same way for the both of you. And you want to be in a real marriage. I mean, that, that's about it, right? Because this interview comes down to knowing the basic information, having the body language, and having a bona fide marriage packet. But that's different than an actual marriage fraud interview, okay? A marriage fraud interview is our second type of interview. That's called a Stokes interview because of a court case that set the standard for when a Stokes interview needs to be initiated by USCIS officer, how it needs to be initiated, and what needs to be asked during the Stokes interview. And if you want more information on the court case, it's in the comments. We're also going to have a blog post with this video and you can check out more about it there. A Stokes interview is really serious. So what the classic Stokes interview is one that you have a heads up about. You come into your initial interview, which is a regular interview, and you're sitting there together as a couple and you stay together as a couple, but for whatever reason, the answers you give set off a red flag with the officer and she can't reconcile whatever's created the red flag with what you've said or what is within your application package. Maybe there's not enough bona fide marriage evidence. Maybe you two just don't fit right. Maybe it's a feeling, but whatever it is, it triggers a formal fraud inquiry, which is what the Stokes interview is. And classically, the way you get notified about this is a follow-up letter saying, hey, you didn't pass your initial interview or uh, we need more information, so you need to come to a second interview. In that second interview, as opposed to the first one, you are separated immediately into two separate rooms and you are asked a set of questions that are the toothbrush questions. So these are the questions that people get really worried about when they're going to a regular marriage interview, but which in fact are part of the Stokes process and that's not very well understood. So let me say here and now, most of the time you're going to know if you have a 
toothbrush interview because it's going to be the second interview you have to attend. Now there's a very good ways to prepare for this and we'll do a second video about it, which you can find on the descriptive part of this video. And so th then we come to the third type of interview, which is a mini Stokes, right? Or spontaneous Stokes. These are my words for it. And this happens when you think you're going in for a regular marriage interview. So not a marriage fraud interview. You think you're going for a regular marriage interview. It's your first time. And for whatever reason, when you start the process together, the officer sees something in the application or maybe in the general uh, experience of being with you in that room that triggers a fraud inquiry. Um, I've seen it happen when there is a difference in, a uh, big difference in age between the candidates and it becomes a little more apparent in the interview. I've also seen it happen where one of the candidates has been a visa overstay uh, and the petitioner is not. And in that case, uh, it's not necessarily a Stokes interview. They just want to make sure that there's no fraud on that application uh, from the from on the beneficiary side. But a true mini Stokes, they are concerned about marriage fraud itself, right? That the marriage, which is underlying the petition, is just not valid. And in that case, you can be split up spontaneously, and all of a sudden, you are in that mini Stokes setting but you're doing a full Stokes interview, so now you're in the full toothbrush stage, okay? What I will say about that is, while it's a risk, you can tell when you have a high risk factor for something like this happening in the interview. You can't tell every time whether it's going to happen to you. What's super important to remember during the time that you're doing a Stokes or a mini Stokes there are lots of things. I don't want to get into that in this video. A lot of it can be case specific. But again, if you'd like to know more, there is a blog post accompanying this video and I encourage you to check out the URL. You can find it in the video description, okay? You can find it in the video description at Bull City Lawyer, which again is the law firm behind this educational channel. The big takeaway though from today is, um, I think there's a lot of confusion online. Again, I'm always on Visa Journey. I'm always reading Emmy Help. Right, I'm, I'm reading uh, a lot of these forums. Murthy Law has a great forum. And this comes up time and time again. Oh my gosh, do I need to know what color toothbrush my spouse uses? Do I need to know what side of the bed they sleep on? And the answer is both probably not and maybe in your situation, yes. Um, but the big takeaway is that that only happens in a Stokes interview, not in a regular marriage interview. And most of the time for a Stokes interview, which is the marriage fraud interview, you are going to have a heads up because it'll be like a second interview session after your first interview. But in some locations, we do see people pulled out spontaneously. That's the biggest worry. That's usually a good reason, right, to prepare very hard for an interview, right? It's one of the most important things you're ever going to do, probably for many people more important than any job interview you're going to attend. Um, I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Better yet, go to the blog post on our website. You can ask questions there. Uh, we're just a little more free to answer things there, right? Um, besides that, Check out our channel, Arab American Lawyer. Check out our Facebook live show, which we do four times a week. It's in Spanish and English. It's called Un Lugar Live. If you want, you can just find me, Damian DeNoble, online, okay? And uh, I'm happy to, to friend, friend you, right? Just kind of send me a message saying, hey, I watch your YouTube. Uh, so I don't think you're just a random spammer or something. Um, but otherwise, you can find Un Lugar Live. It's a public channel. And you can see me on there several times a week along with other members of our team. So I hope this video is super helpful and I can't wait to produce more content for you. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day or night or morning or whatever.